Your Excellencies, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm very pleased to be invited to address the Oil and Money 2012 Forum. Before I started, please allow me to con congratulate the Forum on its opening and wish it a round success. Energy is essential to the living and well-being of mankind, crucial to the development of modern society. As the new round of industrialization further evolves, the world is faced with multi-dimensional challenges in energy security, climate change, and environmental issues. Let me discuss this new round of industrialization first. This round of industrialization, seen mainly in the emerging economies, will translate into social programs and living standard improvements of four billion people. It helped increase the world GDP to 70 trillion US dollars in 2011. Well, Energy consumption grew by more than 2% annually to 12.3 billion tons of oil equivalent. It is forecasted, forecasted that the world economy will grow by 3% annually by 2050. The based, and, and based on today's energy intensity, we would need 3.2 times of the current energy supply. However, there's also opportunities where energy needs by 2050 could reduce to 1.8 times of current level if we could cut the energy intensity to today's European level or average. Greenhouse gas emission largely affects the climate, and the CO2 emission is the main source of greenhouse gas. In 2011, fossil fuels amounted for 87, amounted, sorry, for 87% in the world energy consumption mix, and CO2 emission was as as high as 34 billion tons. UN reports find that current CO2 concentration has already reached 387 ppm. And global average temperature in 2011 rose 0.4 degree Celsius over the 1992. IEA warns that average temperature could rise to 60 degrees Celsius over the pre-industrialization level by 2035. If we continue today's energy intensity, melting of the glaciers, elevating of sea level, and frequent weather extremes of droughts and floods, adding to those are solid pollution, water pollution, and acid rains, which threaten people's life. If such pattern is to be repeated and we fail to effectively curb energy demand increases and emission, our survival and development would be at risk. We must significantly improve energy efficiency, increase low carbon weight, and strike a balance among energy economy, environmental, and human society. As the world's largest developing country, China is right on the track of building modern and all-round well-off society. Implementing a sustainable energy strategy is of, a core, is of a core interest to China and will make huge impact on the world energy industry. Now I'd like to share with you China's practice in blazing the new path of industrialization. China's economy started to take off 
since its reform and opening up in the late 1970s, with GDP growth from 30.3 million US, US dollars in 1980 to 7.5 trillion US dollars in the year 2011. Over the past three decades, China lifted more than 200 million rural citizens out of the poverty, becoming the first country the first country to achieve the Millennium Development Goal targets of halving people below the poverty line. In the next five to 10 years, China will further build more pro prosperous and balanced economy, benefiting its 1.3 billion people. China's energy industry has grown significantly since the late 1970s and its energy self-efficiency rate is about 90%, powering its social and economic progress. However, China still ranks low on per capita terms and coal dominates in energy mix, which is unlikely to change in the near term. Given this in mind, China is exploring a new path of industrialization with high economic efficiency, low resources consumption, and harmony with the environment. Energy conservation has become China's primary solution to be self-sufficient. China's energy intensity is among twice of the world's average, meaning great potential in energy conservation. China's total energy consumption in year 2011 was 2.43 billion tons of oil equivalent and could have been cut by two thirds if it has a similar economic structure and the level of development as the EU. The Chinese government is pacing up to transform its growth pattern and pro promote the energy conservation. From year 2006 to 2010, China's economy grows grow by 11.2% annually, while its annual energy consumption grow by 6.6%. Total energy intensity in this period dropped by 19%, saving 440 million tons of oil equivalent. By the year 2015, China's energy intensity is expected to drop by another 16%, and additional energy saving will be 470 million tons of oil equivalent. In the long run, it is possible that China does not increase the total energy consumption while increasing GDP growth. Improving coal-based energy conservation and utilization efficiency is one of the most effective measures to reduce energy intensity. China's coal resources are abundant. However, conventional coal-fired power generation is not efficient compared to the coal to gas for power generation. The Chinese government has planned for a series of pilot programs by which energy efficiency could be improved by 15% to 30%. Developing coal chemical for clean utilization and increased CO2 applications are efficient to reducing CO2 emission. Along with economic growth, China's oil import reached 57% of its total petroleum consumption by year 2011. With the clean coal technologies, China will be able to substitute with coal to produce chemicals. For example, producing one million tons of olefin with coal will save two million tons of light chemical feedstock from oil, equivalent to reducing a 10 million ton refinery. Besides, the Chinese government is, press, 
is pressing ahead with CO2 capture, storage, and utilization. CO2 is used for enhancing oil recovery, producing of C1 products, and a production of oil and hydrocarbon from micro, alga, CCS, and CO2 utilization provide a solution to not only emission cut, but also energy diversification. China also actively develops new energy and renewables to increase non-fossil weight. Its a hydro and wind power installation ranked the first in the world. Its a solar energy enjoys the fastest, fastest growth. And it has the, the largest in, in structure nuclear energy capacity. However, there are also problems not, not to neglect. The traditional energy and the new energy are not mutually complementary yet. And it will take some time to, to the related policies to be formulated in, and in place. Even though wind power and solar are experiencing cold winter currently, they have huge market potential in the long term at home, home market. China expects to increase non-fossil weight in the primary energy mix to 11.4% by year 2015 to 15% by year 2020. And conventional oil and gas resources will also be deployed to safeguard the China's energy security. It will accelerate the EMP of coal bed methane, shale oil, and shale gas. Its, its unconventional gas production targeted by 2020 to 100 billion cubic meters. We firmly believe that China could be self-sufficient in energy on its journey to industrialization and urbanization. Being self-sufficient and not only safeguard China's sustainable development, but also contributions greatly to the world's sustainable growth. Finally, I'd like to discuss with you Center Pack's green, path, green growth vision. We at Center Pack believe green growth reflects expectations of modern society and should be embedded in our business. As China's largest integrated energy and chemical company, Sinopec shoulders both economic responsibility of meeting energy needs and the social, respons social responsibility of taking care of the environment. Through reducing energy consumption, emission, and footprint in our operations, as well as providing green products, we aim to achieve a green growth with harmonious development of, of the company, social and economic development, and the environment. Since 2005, our energy saving has totaled 11 million tons of oil e equivalent, which translates into 300 million trees planted, or 39 million tons of a CO2 emission cut, equivalent to cutting emission from 11 million economic cars for one year. Meanwhile, we reduce the CO2 emission by 29%, SO2 by 46%, and saved 580 million tons, uh, 80 million cubic meters of water. We are also optimizing energy portfolio by increasing the weight of natural gas. We doubled our gas production by 2020, expand LNG facilities and supplies, push environmental hydrocarbon production to commercial skill and fasten, fasten our growth in the cellulose, ethanol, biodiesel, bio jet fuels, and other biomass energy as well as thermal energy.
geothermal energy. Our progress in coal and gas, coal chemical, and coal to liquid is remarkable. Our commercialized methanol to all of technology is the first class and in a leading position. And the coal to MEG plant will be on stream shortly. By integrating coal chemical and petrochemical, our coal to all of capacity will account for 10% of cracking capacity. And coal to gas capacity will amount for 30% of total gas pr production by year 2015. We will also increase the use of CO2 in EOR and other applications, and further development low carbon technologies as well as to realize truly green growth. Today, global oil demand stands about 88 million barrels a day, and the demand supply is rather tight. The $100 per barrel oil price has negatively impacted energy recovery. It is a shared responsibility of oil industry to increase the supply and meet the world's needs. In recent years, Senepac has teamed up with NOCs and IOCs and other companies around the world and make billions of dollars of investments in boosting global energy supply and mitigating the impact of high oil prices. Our internal, international operations and cooperations not only increase the job opportunities and fiscal revenues of host countries, but also developing local employees' skills and knowledge. Farming, uh, forming a talent pool essential to the host countries in their petroleum industry growth. We also actively contributing to the local social development by building infrastructure, infrastructure aiding welfare programs of the local communi community. Ladies and gentlemen, our journey of su sustainable development is by no means easy. And it would be possible without any industry su sustainable development. Let's join hands together for a better and harmonious future. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm.